Uh, we're going to take up prayer requests. Anybody got a prayer request? Bring it for us. Brother Brother. Chris, y'all still remember to pray for Rachel to her baby. He's doing better, but he still needs a touch from the Lord. Y'all remember him. My lost children. Pray for my wife. She she needs it.
got three pages of notes this morning. I'm kind of scared I might, might go a little long. <laughs> Wednesday night, I only had one. And, uh, I, uh, it was more from the heart Wednesday night. And um, if y'all aren't here, I was talking about John 3, 16. You know, we've all heard it. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. And um, Wednesday night, I, I try to make a personal application out of John 3, 16. You know, God so loved the world, he did. I so loved the world, what do I do? Come on. And um, it really made an impact on me. My wife, I was, I was dealing with a situation this week. She said, don't forget Wednesday night's message. <laughs> I looked at her like, I have, but I'm still human. If you got your Bibles, turn to John chapter number 11, verse number 32. <coughs> this morning, my sinuses are bothering me pretty good. I had the, the rotor rooter scheduled to clear it all out, but I had to postpone it. They postponed it the first time, and I had to postpone, so it's just... Uh, Something I'm having to deal with. So, John chapter number 11, verse number 32. Very familiar scripture. Um, heard it preached on many times. And I just want to hit on it this morning. It says, Then Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, and fell at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not have died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in his spirit and was troubled. He said, Where have you laid him? And they said unto him, Lord, come and see. Verse number 35, that's where I'm going to take my scripture text. Jesus wept. Heavenly Father, God, I, I love you, Lord. I thank you for the opportunity to stand behind this desk this morning, God, and to share this glorious gospel, God. I, I know that that things change and lives can be affected, God, by what's being said this morning, Lord. If there's one that's that's going through a situation this morning, they're, they're questioning you, they're questioning their faith, God. If they, they seem doubt, God, they, they seem like you don't hear them, they don't, you don't love them, God, this morning. It will reassure what you've proven to me time and time again. I thank you for this opportunity in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, if we go to... Back to the first of this chapter, we're, we're talking about Lazarus. This is when Lazarus was sick and he's about to die. And here, it was on the tail end of the story right before Jesus raises Lazarus from the grave. Jesus comes and, and Mary comes out and says, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. And Jesus wept. Verse number 35. I remember when I was in Sunday school. Out of all the Sunday school classes, all the lessons, I can only remember two from when I was a kid. <laughs> One of them was this scripture here, Jesus wept. The Sunday school teacher, if we would listen really intently during the class, she would uh, let us go ahead and get done and go play and give us candy and all that. And I remember one, one Sunday morning, we were all really rambunctious and gave her a hard time. And she's like, if y'all would just sit down for a minute, let me get my lesson done, we'll... We'll, uh, we'll, do, we'll do this, and you can have your candy, and you can go and play. We all sat down. It took about 10, 15 minutes to get us all to, to calm down for a minute. We sit down. We're, we're listening intently. She says, John 11, 35, Jesus wept. All right, let's get the candy and the plays. I'm like, <laughs> I said, where's the rest of it? How, what would y'all say to me this morning if that's all I brought Jesus wept. All right, let's go home, y'all. Get, get to the ham. Get to the, the turnip greens. <clears throat> I go to the beginning of this thing, and it, it says in verse number three, Mary realizes her brother was sick, and then she calls out to Jesus. She says, Lord, come come here. You know, this morning in, in the Sunday school class, he was talking about prayer. I, I was going to start it Wednesday night, but he, he beat me to it. And uh, the Lord changed it, and he was reading stuff. I was like, that's on my pages. The, the quotes, were the, some, some of the same quotes. I was like, my goodness. <laughs> he said, when is, it, when is it easiest to pray? And they said, this morning, it's easiest to pray when you're going through something hard. You know, when things are good, we don't cry out to God. When I got money in the bank, 
I ain't got to worry about things. When my health is good, I ain't got to say, Jesus, come, come do this. We're just going through these prayers. We, we find so many times that intercessor, we don't, we don't get to the intercessory prayer, praying for others as often as we should. But we'll flash your plate, pray for ourselves when we're going through something bad. Mary's sitting here. She's going through a bad situation with her family. That's what Brother Gerald said this morning. When it's you or yours, her brother's sick. And she, she cries out to the Lord. She says, Jesus, come, come and see Lazarus because he's sick. She says in verse number three, Lord, you, you got to know, it's Lazarus. It's the one that you love. Yeah. He's the one that's sick. This ain't no stranger, Lord. It's somebody you love and you care for. This morning, I want to I talk to you a little bit about Jesus cares for you. On Sunday, Wednesday night, I talked about Jesus loving us so much. God loved us so much that he done something. But this morning, I want to take it to the next level. Not only does he love you, but he cares for you. Yeah. Yeah. Mary, Mary comes to this point, and she felt the love of God. She felt that the Lord loved her. Lazarus had felt that relationship, had felt that love from the Lord. That's why Mary in verse 3 says, the one thou loved, he's sick. When Jesus heard it in verse number 4, he says, listen, this is where it gets good. This sickness is not unto death, but that the glory of God and that the Son of God may be glorified. The things that we face in this life are not to death, but to bring glory to God. Right now, it might feel like whatever you're facing has got the better hand of you. It might feel like the sickness that's upon you has got the better hand of you. It might feel like your circumstances has got the better hand of you. It looks like your, your finances are falling apart and you ain't got nothing to do. And it feels like it's got the better hand of you. And yet you're, you're sitting there and you're saying, yeah, Lord, this, this thing's working to my death. And my goodness, if it does, if, if it takes you to the deathbed. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. Because he conquered death hell in the grave. When it's all said and done, he's already conquered death. He's already moved to the next level. Yeah. And if we do lay this mortal body down, all it's done is brought on eternal life. We, we're not going to take this death. This thing that's in your life this morning that seems so big, it's not to death. You've got eternal life this morning. What you've got to decide this morning, where your destination is going to be, where your final home is going to be. You're going to live forever. Yeah. It's already been established. We're going to live forever. So I, it feels like, oh, it's, it's to death. When that word, I heard cancer. My son-in-law's got cancer. That word scares us. Yes, it scares me. I, I've seen people with cancer. I've seen the chemo. I've seen the radiation. I've seen what it does to this earthly body, and it scares us. This morning, it felt like it's, it's, it's going to death. And Jesus looked at his disciples and he says, This thing is not to death, but it's that the glory of God may be seen. This morning, I want to encourage you to be strong now because these things that's in your life are not to bring death, but it's to bring glory to God and glory to the Son of God. Amen. Thank you. Amen. We get so worried and so upset and so tormented in our mind when we go through these things. I've done it. Yeah. I've, I've faced these situations. Maybe not the one you're going through, but I've gone through things and it felt like Jesus didn't even care. And it just felt like, you know, I ought to just give up. I called on him. I called on him and he didn't show. Verse number six, it says, Jesus gets the news and he, he kicked back in the recliner. Watched a football game for two days. That's what it felt like. How could the Lord do this? How could the Lord? He felt like, I called to him and he didn't show up this morning. You know, I, Lord, don't you know that I'm sick and the doctor said I've got three days yeah. and you're dragging around on me. Why ain't you showing up? It felt like the Lord didn't care. It felt like he didn't love him. I'm sure that somehow, Mary found out. She knew that he was in Caesarea or Judah. And she knows how long it takes a camel to get from point A to point B. And she found out. Somebody told her, I was there whenever they told Jesus that Lazarus was sick. And Jesus didn't even acknowledge it. He stayed where he's at. He kept preaching for another two days. He kept ministering there for two more days. 
He don't care for you, Mary. He don't love you no more, Mary. There was somebody in the ear saying, just give up, Mary. Don't worry about that man. Don't worry about that man. He ain't the son of God. If he was the son of God, he would have stopped what he was doing, and he would have run to you to be here for your brother today. Bless you, Lord. Next thing you know, we see where Lazarus dies. I know somebody was there. If Jesus would have come, it went in verse 34, 33. It says, if you would have been here, Jesus, if you would have just been here, he wouldn't have died. Where do you think she got that from? Somebody was feeding her that. Satan, somebody that was around her, some person. Oh, if Jesus would have come two days ago. If he would have come two days ago, he wouldn't have died, Mary. But now, he lets you down. He give up on you, Mary. <coughs> what we got to know is that Jesus knows that that situation is going to push you to a deeper walk with God. Jesus is letting that situation move you to a deeper walk with God, a deeper faith, a deeper understanding of his love, a deeper understanding the, for his care. Yes. Now it finally comes to the point, it's time for Jesus to go. In verse number 8. Jesus says, all right, disciples, let's go to Judah again. <coughs> The disciples looked at him and said, whoa, hold on now. Last time we went to Judah, they tried to kill you, remember? <laughs> Jesus, you got a lot on your plate here lately. You know, you got all these, the 5,000, you just fed the 5,000. That was a lot of stress on you, Lord. You know, you had to break all that bread. It took hours. <clears throat> you know, I've been worried about the church, whether it can keep the lights on, Lord, because we got, the tithes has been down. Lord, you had a lot on your mind here lately. But last time we went to Judah, they tried to kill us. We don't need to go back to Judah. When I see this, it, 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 makes, me, it makes me start thinking. All right, now when Jesus finally realizes it's his time to come, and all these things were stacked up on that mortal body. Yes. He, he, he was flesh. He died on a cross. He was beat. He was, he was crucified. And his body could have died when he went through Judah, Judea. But when it was time for Jesus to come, when it was time for Jesus to show up, it didn't matter which devil in hell got in front of him. It didn't matter which government tried to kill him. It didn't matter which government tried to stop him. There was no power on earth that would stop him from getting to Mary and Lazarus when it was time to come. So this morning, you might feel like it's all, all hope's gone. It might feel like everything's all, all shook up. It might feel like Jesus is delayed. But guess what? When it's time for him to be there, he will not be late. He will not be early. But he will be right on time. There ain't nothing that will get in his way. But he says, okay, it's time for me to leave here and to go through Judea and to show up in Jerusalem and raise that man out of the grave. I encourage you this morning, be not discouraged. There is nothing in this world that can get between God and his children when it's time. But now don't, don't be dismayed whenever his timing ain't your timing. Come on. So many times in my life, I'm like, God, I need you to move now. I need you to, I can't take no more. I can't take no more. I remember I was stretched, stretched to the mouth, the max. I had no hope. I, I, was, I finally called my mom. I said, I can't take no more, mom. I have had a belly full. My, my plate is full. It is overtaking me. The waves are coming in. They, my life is going under. I don't know what to do. She said, son, you're right where the Lord wants you. Call out to him. Pray. Pray. This morning the lesson was on prayer. Amen. Call out to him. Amen. You're right where he wants you. You're right where he wants you. You will not be overtaken. Hallelujah. You will come through this and you will stand victorious. But in his time and not yours. When he shows up, it all changes. Verse 11 through 13, he tells his disciples, all right, we're going to wake him up. He sleeps. The old carnal mind said, whoa, he's sleeping. I'm a sick man don't need to wake up. Let him sleep. His body will heal itself. He said, no, no. We got to go wake him up. They're like, no, we don't, Jesus. At that flesh is always going to fight what the Lord wants. Yeah, yeah. We think we know better. God, I, I just 
need to rest. He said, no, you need to go. Oh, God, I need to go. No, you need to stay. Yeah, I've, I've heard it preach go, man. I've heard it preach rest. <clears throat> I know one church, all they preach is rest. Don't stop, 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 stop. Next church I go to, go, 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 go. My, what do I do? <laughs> Jesus knows. Jesus knows. He says, the Lord finally looked at him in verse number 14. He told the disciples. The disciples, are, Jesus said he's asleep. We've got to go wake him. The disciples said, let him rest. Jesus says in verse 14, he says, all right, I guess I'm going to have to spell it out for you. Because just like God had to do for Abraham, he said, Lazarus is dead. Jesus looks at his disciples, Peter, Lazarus is dead. Yeah. Oh, Lord. We, if we went away in two days. And Jesus said in verse 15, and I'm glad of it. What? Lazarus is dead, verse 14. The next thing he says in bold red letters, and I'm glad for it. For your sakes, that I was not there to the intent the reason behind it is that you may believe. Amen. Amen. I was glad he died. That way, the intent and the purpose behind this is that you may believe. Nevertheless, let's go unto him. Don't be worried. Don't be dismayed. For what you go through, Jesus said, is the intent of it and the cause of it today is that you may believe. Yeah. Amen. My goodness. Amen. That you may believe. The disciples are sitting there walking with the Son of God. Can you imagine? Day in and day out. They've seen him do acts and wonders and miracles. And then still, they can't believe this. Mary couldn't believe it. And Jesus goes, and he says, all right, now let's go. The disciples are still like, whoa. Whenever he said, I'm glad that Lazarus was dead and I wasn't there, half the church lost him right there. Half the church put him out, went ahead and crucified him. Didn't finish the second half of that statement. You know, sometimes old preacher get up and say something that rubs you just the wrong way. And then next thing you know, you don't get the, you don't get to get the whole part of it. You don't get to get the whole thing. And you take something out of context. Come on. That's what the disciples, I guarantee you, especially Judas. Old Judas was stir, stirring apart Peter. Did you hear Jesus say, I was glad we weren't there? He worked, I was glad we weren't there. Peter, I just don't know if I can follow this man. Maybe this is where it started turning with Judas. I don't know. It's not, it's not lined out. But don't, don't let something said stir you the wrong way. Take the whole thing in context. Jesus shows up on verse 21. Martha runs to meet him on the outskirts of town. Here, we start seeing... Why? Why he was doing it. Martha said, If thou hadst been here, my brother had not have died. If you've been here, my brother would not have died. She didn't have the faith that Jesus could raise him from the dead. You know, I didn't have the faith that God could send an $800 bill. An 800, not a, not a bill, but eight $100 bills put cash money on my table the very moment that I needed it. I remember when I had these things coming through my God. Had, I made over $100,000 a year for years and years and years. When I got saved, I made 60. The year after I got saved, I made 20. First thing God did was rip my financial stability out from under me. 
I told people, you can't trust the Lord when you make $100,000 a year. I didn't have to pray that God would send money to pray for my bills. But I remember that second year that I was born again, I lost everything. I, I went to the bottom. I didn't have enough money for nothing. And I remember calling out to God. I said, God, I can't find a job. I can't do this. I'm a, I'm a worker. I've always worked. I didn't get these tan lines by, by sitting in the house. <laughs> Go, brother. And it ain't for fishing all the time. I ain't got that kind of money. But, but through all that, I didn't know God could pay my bills till I didn't have no money. I didn't know that God could heal me till the doctor said that it was all hope was gone. Well. And God's sitting here, and he's, and Jesus is saying, look, verse 23, he says, your brother's going to rise again, Martha. Yeah. And Martha said, oh, Lord, verse number 24. Martha said, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Yeah. You know, so many times we're, we're, us full gospel Christians ain't full gospel. So many times us full gospel Christians ain't full gospel. We believe that Jesus can pay this and he can do this, but he can't do that. When's the last time somebody seen a dead man come out of a coffin? Faith like ain't that ain't that faith like that ain't been around since Wigglesworth. I ain't never raised a dead man. We believe that God can keep us, but not raise us from the dead. And here's Martha's. She's like, Lord, I hear you saying that He's going to rise again, and I believe that one of these days, in the resurrection, when we go to eternity, then He'll live again. And then He'll rise again. And Jesus said, uh. Well, in the resurrection, he'll live again, Martha said. But now here in verse 25, I've heard this one preached a thousand times. This is in the context it was wrote. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? He, he turned it back to her again. He said, do you believe me? She said unto him, yes, Lord, I believe. I believe you're the son of God. I believe you're the Christ which come to the world. And when she had said that to him, she went away. She said, I believe you're the son of God, and I believe you're the Christ. But he said, do you believe I'm the resurrection? Do you believe I'm the life? She said, I believe you're the son of God. But no, I couldn't say that you're the resurrection. I couldn't say that you were the life when Lazarus was sick. I couldn't say you were the resurrection when Lazarus was alive. But what Christ is trying to do this whole time is give her a deeper revelation of him and what he was. He said, I am the son of God, but he said, I am also the resurrection. I am also the life. And if you believe in me, though you were dead, yet shall you live. So many times we get a partial re revelation of what Jesus Christ is. Oh, he's the son of God. He said, but am I the resurrection? And she said, I don't know. I know you're the Christ, and I know you're the Son of God. But I don't read where she said, yes, you're the resurrection. Yes, you're the life. She turned and walked away from him. And Jesus sitting here in verse number 27, he's still having to deal with her doubt. How many times has Jesus had to do that with me? How many times has Jesus had to do that with you? He said, yes, you believe I'm the Son of God. But do you believe on the resurrection? I've read that scripture. I've heard that scripture preached. And man, it wasn't until I was getting this. Man, he's trying to give you a deeper revelation of who he is. He is the Alpha. And he is the Omega. He is the beginning. He is the end. He is the I Am. He is all them, all them plagues that was sent to Egypt. It was to go against every one of their major gods. Over and over and over. God attacked and overcome their, those gods. And what he's trying to do in your life is trying to put himself most superior in your life. Not only is he the son of God, but he is the resurrection. He is the life. And if you'll believe on him, though you're dead, yet you will live. They move on and they... They take them. She says, okay. They, they move on in verse number 39. They get down to the graveyard. Verse number 39. 
And Jesus says to him, take away the stone. Take away the stone. Yeah. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinks. Yeah. For he's been dead for four days. Yeah. Martha said he stinks. He's been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, If thou wouldest believe, thou shalt see the glory of God. Thank you, Lord. If you would just believe, you will, be, we will, you will see the glory of God. Jesus in verse 40, he's still working on her faith. Hallelujah. He didn't, he didn't give up on her when she come at him mad and upset and was rude to him. If you would have been here, Jesus, man, he's got more patience than me. Like, woman, I'm about to do something good for you. And you're going to talk to me like that? And I'm the son of God. That's what I would have said. <laughs> I haven't got to what I preached. Wednesday night yet. I love the world so much that I what he's still trying to do in his ever loving mercy and kindness and love and grace he says look Martha I'm still trying to build faith in you. Anybody ever seen people in church beside you that was a little more hard headed than everybody can see it whenever it's the person over there I heard that story they point and they got three pointing back at you <laughs> so many times in this life, I can see your doubt, and I can see your disbelief, and I've got all these issues that I can see with what you're going to like, man, if, if <laughs> I see what their problem is, and I'm sitting here pointing back at me, and I'm like, man, I'm, I'm still questioning whether Jesus is the resurrection myself. And Jesus is so loving and so kind here. He's still in verse number 40. He's still trying to build her faith. Verse number 41. Verse number 41, it says, Then they took away the stone. Somebody finally had enough faith to roll the stone away. One day I'll preach at it. <laughs> Who's going to roll the stone? They finally took the stone away from where the dead man was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou heard me. Yes, and I know that thou hearest me even though you don't show up when I ask you to. Even though you don't show up when I need you to. And even though you delayed your coming. He said I know you hear me now because it's time. Because things are fixing to change. But because of the people which stand by I say this, that they may believe. Again, he's addressing their faith and their doubt. When he goes to pray to God the Father, he said, I thank you that you hear me. And I know you hear me. <coughs> but I'm having to pray this prayer because these people that surround me. That they stand by me. I'm having to say this, God. God, they ain't got the faith that I'm the resurrection yet. God, they ain't got the faith that I'm alive. God, they know that I can, I can resurrect them in the end. I, they know they can believe in heaven. But they can't believe in this life that I'm preaching today. He says, because these people that surround me, I'm praying today. That, go back to that intercessory that he was teaching on in Sunday school this morning. My goodness, I'm praying today because these people all around me. Jesus is talking to his father. He says, God, I know you hear me. Yeah. I know I ain't got to say this. But I'm having to this morning because all their doubts and their fears. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth bound hand and foot in grave clothes, and his face, his face was bound with a napkin. And Jesus said unto him, 
Come done to them. To all the Jews and all the people standing around. Somebody loose him and let him go. Yeah. And then many of the Jews which were there came to Mary and seen the things that Jesus did. And then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did finally believed on him. Yeah. Yeah. You know, whenever uh, when Jesus finally shows up and, and, and you've been through this trial, you've been through that cancer, you've been through this financial stress, you've been through all these, these prodigals that's left, your your backslidden children, your your backslidden husband, your, your your adulterous wife, whatever it is you're going through today, whenever Jesus finally shows up, and when Jesus begins to pray, and when Jesus begins to intercede for you with his father. Come on. You know, I didn't I don't read where it took two days for God to move on Jesus' behalf. May I preach that one time. Get Jesus my intercessor. May I'm supposed to intercede for others. But what I thought this morning, that the Son of God is interceding for me and you Amen. to our Heavenly Father. Amen. He's sitting there this morning. He says, Lord, you see what they're going through. You've seen the pain. You've seen the tears. This morning, God, I'm asking you to move. God, I'm asking you to come in and move in their situation. This morning, when Jesus began to intercede for you, it's going to change. Nobody had to do anything. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And immediately, I, there was a shaking. There was something big going on. That whole ground shaking. Everything, that body, I, I believe whenever whenever that breath come back into that life, I believe it was a violent thing. <laughs> Maybe he screamed.
Hallelujah. What a promise. Hallelujah. We can live on and, and be in. You, you said, Brother Chris, why are you, you, you talking about, you said the scripture text was verse 35. <coughs> Jesus wept. How are you going to tie all this thing together, Brother Chris? How does it all fit together? You know, in John 11, 35, it says, Jesus wept. <clears throat> Here, we see the Son of God, Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, the everlasting. We see him begin to cry. He's standing outside. And he's crying. He began to tear it up and he's crying. And he's crying. And you know, I, I don't read anywhere leading up to this in this scripture that Jesus cried. It says in verse 33 when Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews weeping which came with her. Then he groaned. Yeah. Or it says he was moved deeply. He knew back in verse 4, verse number 7, he was glad that Lazarus died. There's much rejoicing when the saints of God, when a, when a lover and the, and the child of God dies, there should be weeping and groaning. We do because we miss them. I buried my grandmother, I told y'all. And I cried. Yeah. The loss of a loved one, I cried. But it should be a joyous thing. When I read about the Son of God, he knew that Lazarus died. He didn't cry. But this morning, this morning, it says, but when Jesus saw her, saw his friend Mary, and all the Jews that were there weeping. Then he groaned, and his spirit was troubled. And in verse number 35, it moved into tears. It wasn't because Lazarus died. <coughs> he knew. But this right here, verse number 35, Jesus wept. It shows me that not only does Jesus love you? But Jesus cares for you. Yes, he does. Because whenever you hurt, Hallelujah. when you're in pain, and when you took all that you can take, and you began to weep, and that that travail comes out. Yeah. God, I can't take no more. It's more than I can carry. It hurts the heart of God. He hurts. He saw me cry, and then it says that he wept. Yeah. It wasn't because Lazarus died, but he saw, he saw the pain, and he saw the agony that I was going through. The only thing that I can compare that to is with my oldest daughter. She had to get her tonsils taken out. You know, God healed her ears. We put the anointing all on her. She had ear infection after ear infection. God, miraculously, you know, we prayed and we prayed. The doctors to say we're going to do surgery, put tubes in, such a minor thing. But boy, this old daddy, I couldn't take it. I prayed. I'm, man, I got in the prayer room. God, you're going to heal her. You're going to heal her. And God healed her ears. Hallelujah. And then the tonsils come. And I remember, I remember the doctors, oh, we're going we're gonna to go through surgery, take her tonsils out. I said, oh, no, you ain't. I said, I'll go through these motions, but my God's going to touch. My God's going to heal. I said, he's going to show up in the matter right before, right before you got to. <coughs> we, we took her to the doctor. Looked, the tonsils were swole shut. She couldn't breathe at night. It was so bad. And I was like, oh, my goodness. This is what I'm talking about here. Jesus wept. And me as a daddy, my little baby, we take her to the doctor. The tonsils got to come out. We take her to the hospital. And I'm like, all right. <coughs> I've heard stories. When they went to go do the surgery, they're like, there ain't nothing to do surgery on. So I'm sitting there, and I'm like, all right, Lord, it's time. Yeah. Jesus, it's time for you to show up. Jesus, the doctor's got the blade in his hand. He's fixing to cut. The anesthesia's already been done. God, they're fixing to open her now. God, you got to show up now. you got to show up now. And when that knife cut, I'm like, whoa. Oh. God, I know you can heal her ears, but I don't know if you can keep her through a surgery. God, I don't know if you can keep her through the anesthesia. I don't know if you can keep her to let some man 
cut on her and, and do all this. And he's sitting there the whole time. He said, boy, you will believe stronger through this. If I got a miraculous healing, thank God I believe in laying on my hands and praying for somebody. But sometimes the prayer of faith is made and the man's going to die. Sometimes the prayer of faith, cancer be healed. Sometimes cancer ain't going to be healed. Sometimes you got to go through chemo. Sometimes you got to go through these bad things. And now what he's trying to do through all of this, all these people that's watching this great Christian man walk and all the things he's professed leading up to this, they're all about to see what you're going through. Yeah. Are they going to believe because of you this morning? Are they going to believe because the doctor done a good job? Daughter goes in and cuts. It's been 30 minutes, an hour, hour and a half, I don't know. <clears throat> I'm sitting there, I'm like, Lord, it's been too long for him to come back and tell me that she was miraculously healed. And I'm, I'm sitting there like, oh, she's actually, the blade's in there. And they're carving their tonsils out. I was, I was like, oh, Lord, I remember being so upset. And I remember, I remember the doctor come out and said, the surgery went well, brother. Surgery went well. I was like, oh, thank you. When can I see my daughter? When can I see my daughter? And he said, oh, come on back. Come on back. Yeah. She's right. She's right through. As soon as he opened the doors, I heard her cry. Man, I've never, I've never hurt. I've never hurt like I heard that day. I knew my daughter's tonsils had been just carved out with a knife. And I heard my daughter crying. And the doctor's trying to tell me where to go, how to get there. I didn't have to. Whenever it was time for me to show up, when it was time for me to get there, there wasn't nobody getting between me and my daughter. Just like Jesus, he said, you ain't going through Judea, they'll kill you. But when he heard me cry, it moved the heart of God. Yeah. And I heard my daughter crying. I ran through that hospital, me and her mom were violently daring anybody to get in our way. I get in there and my daughter's, ah! Her tonsils were so all shut so bad. Her voice changed, but I could still recognize it. It moved to another level, and I knew she was hurting. I knew she was scared, and I ran with everything inside of me to get to her this morning. But maybe today's the day that you're crying and you're screaming in agony. You felt more than you could take. You feel like all hope's gone, but I'm telling you, just like me and my daughter, when you begin to cry out to God, and it pushes you to that next level of prayer, and it pushes you to that next level of seeking, the Bible says those who diligently seek Him, diligently seek Him, then you're going to find Him. Have you been diligently seeking Him? Oh, I remember when I started diligently seeking. It's whenever this world's pushed on me and pushed on me and pushed on me so much that I just can't take it no more. And then I began to cry out to God. Rachel was sitting there. Nothing looked familiar. She was in a place she didn't know what to do, didn't know what to, 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 what to say, but she just started crying. Mama! Daddy! Yeah. And Mama and Daddy come running. Moving, I mean, it didn't matter. This is this whole mortal body, I throw this pulpit out of the way to get to my daughters. Yeah. That piano's not safe if it's between me and my daughters when it's time. This morning. This morning. Thank you, Jesus. It's that. Hallelujah. You can believe, and they can believe. Don't be discouraged. Don't be dismayed. Don't worry. Just keep that in mind. When you're when you're going through all these things and, and you're facing all these things, it just feels like it just feels like it just feels like you've had all you can take. No, this morning Jesus is happy. Yes, yes. He's glad. And you don't understand it. But you know. I guarantee you, I guarantee you when old Lazarus come out of that grave, I guarantee you, you ask Lazarus, Lazarus, you know you had to die. Was it worth it? Lazarus said, how many people, how many people got saved? He said, how many people got saved? He said, brother, it, it was so many, we didn't even put a number on it. Many. 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 Much. A lot. 
Old Lazarus would have looked at him and said, you know, I'd, I'd say it was worth it, brother. The, the, the kingdom of God has moved forward because of what I went through. Amen. People whose lives were affected and they were changed. When it was all said and done, <clears throat> Jesus would have said, Martha, <coughs> Martha, do thou believe that I'm the resurrection and the life? Yeah. She said, oh, Yesterday, Lord, I didn't. No. Yesterday, I believe you were just the son of God. But today, I believe if you ask Martha, Martha, do thou believe that I am the resurrection and the life? Yes. After yesterday's events, do thou believe today? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, you're the resurrection. Yes, you're the life. If any man believe on you, though he were dead, yes, shall he live. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, it's worth it. Yes, it's worth it. I'll walk another day. I'll go through one more trial, Father God. Now I see these people born again. I see my brother back. I see the faith that my sister has. I see all these good things that you've done through this bad situation. Was it worth it? Yes, it was worth it. Yes. Thank yes. you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Catch a grip of that while you walk through these things. Man. Man, to move to that deeper revelation, sometimes it's going to hurt. Sometimes it's going to sting. But now, next time, you'll know he's more than just the Son of God. He is the resurrection. He is the life. So much more there than just being the son. The son of God. And then to know that we're joint heirs with that. The things that he did I can do. And greater. But without, without that test, we ain't going to have no testimony. That's a lot of people just don't want to go through the test no more. And uh, I'm one of them. I don't, I don't want to see, see my favorite brother die. Oh, but if I can keep in mind while I'm going through that, you know that cancer, this sickness, there's all these people, there's all these people that surround me that could be affected this morning, and they may believe because of my faith. <laughs> Maybe I can bite my tongue and hold that doubt back a little bit this week. Don't think because I don't say that I doubt God. Don't think it don't come in this mind. I'm just trying to bite my tongue a little bit harder. And when I go through that, let the people hear you say, because the Bible says, thank God in all things. You know, I'm going through this bad thing. I just want to thank God. I thank God they gave me today. I got today. Heavenly Father, God, I love you, Lord. You've been so good to me, God, beyond all means. You just you bless me, God. You've been faithful. I don't question your love this morning, and I know that you care for me, God, through this through this message. God, you, you cried. When you saw those hurt, God, you cried. You weep. God, it shows me that you care for me. God, Satan's going to say he don't care. He didn't show up when he was supposed to. But I know. I know. Through this testimony of Lazarus, and through this testimony of Mary, and through this testimony of Martha, I know. And you care, you love, and you'll always show up right on time. God, help us to be encouraged this morning. And, uh, and our faith, God, let faith arise this morning. God, if there's anybody this morning, God, that's just overloaded, wrap your arms around them this morning. Let them know it's going to be okay. Let them know Lazarus will live. Let them know. People will be saved. Others will be lead because of this. And I thank you for this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Is there anybody here this morning that, that needs prayer? Just general. I don't want to miss an opportunity to pray for you if you need it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.
this week y'all be encouraged, not unto death, but that others may believe. Amen. And even if I do die, even if they lay this body down, it's just temporary. There, there's an eternal thing going on. Oh yeah. It, it's <laughs> just changing my location. Amen. Changing locations. Y'all, uh, y'all have a good week, and we'll we'll see you Wednesday night. You dismissed.